All right, before we move on to the last movie, uh, we're going to let the audience know that you guys can go and support the podcast and also get some cool merch. You can go to saltynerdstore.com. That takes you to our Teespring account, uh, which has some T-shirts, some stickers, and some cool stuff there. If you'd like to get some of our uh, merchandise and also help support the podcast, you can go there. That'd be pretty cool. We'd appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure that you would love your products. I'm say? wearing my Salty Nerd shirt right she is. now. I've got, did I miss the memo? You guys are both wearing Salty Nerd shirts. That's recording day. I wore my sexual Tyrannosaurus shirt okay. today because of you your Jurassic Park your shirt. Jurassic Park shirt you wear every day? I'm going to have to. I have two of them. I wear, my, I wear my Salty <laughs> we, we Nerd make... shar- sh- shirt. <laughs> I wear my Salty Nerd shirt on recording days unless there's a theme that I have a t-shirt for. Ah, okay. Yeah. So we, we, we need to make a t-shirt that says sexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> on it it's on my list I, here you want guys want to see my list no. for shirts that i want to make look at that look at that list i'm on the um i'm making his name is horace right now it's on my computer <laughs> <laughs> What's, his, na- his, his name, name is, was horace. is horace from monster squad i've got it says his name is and then a shotgun and then horace are, it's you, are be, you making the we senor yes <laughs> that's on the t-shirt. list that's on the list it's I, would, here, I would never buy that shirt we senor with a cup of coffee, <laughs> like a little, little pinky sticking out. And a, and a croissant. All right. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about Starship Troopers. This Yay. was my pick for this week. Would you like to know more? Would you like to know more? I love this movie. It's so much fun. And it's, it's, it's kind of... Can I call your attention to what Kadish has been hiding under his hand? He's got the book. The entire which I'm, time we've been recording. I, I noticed it when I walked in. He's got the novel. Um, which I'm pretty sure is fairly different from the actual movie, if I'm not, not mistaken. Not that different. No? Anyway, okay. I'll, I'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I'm we sure you it. will. Mm. Uh, <laughs> For probably a good 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, I just I picked this movie because when I think of aliens and I, and I wanted to pick something that was vastly different than what I picked last um, last podcast. It's, just, it's a cheesy action alien movie. And when I say cheesy, it's just it has that quality to it where it's not quite like top grade cinema it but it's still really really well done oh, i disagree like this movie is very deep there are lots of different levels to this movie i'm not talking about like the the like the concepts and the and the 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 messages that it has well, but i'm just well, like the, the, the filming though, itself even like the it, way it looks and the casting choices were like very intentional because i mean paul verhoven the guy who directed this movie uh, very fa- just, very we'll famous, <laughs> yeah. V- very famous director who's who's big on satire and it, it, like we'll go into his choices when we dive deep into this. But um, like everything in this movie was just if you're familiar with Paul Verhoeven films, like you'll just realize like oh yeah, that's Paul Verhoeven. <laughs> I just I, I when I look at it, I don't know what it is specifically. I can't. Maybe you'll be able to explain to me why I think this. But when I look at it. It just, it seems like it's filmed in a different way than most other movies. It, the, the actual quality of the film, everything's, most of the stuff is practical, except for maybe a few scenes with the aliens. But the outfits themselves, they feel very like homemade almost. The helmets and stuff feel very plasticky. I don't know if that's a conscious choice that they made. It just, it feels fake almost. Like the, the football uniforms that they wear during the game that, that Rocco was a, Rico. Rico. Rico is wearing like the, the football uniforms seem like something somebody made for a cosplay. It just, I don't know, it has that quality to it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I just, the whole movie feels like Why that. Why don't you tell the audience what the movie's about? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Starship Troopers is about, um, Basically, it's a propaganda-esque satire, I guess, kind of movie uh, where a young boy decides that he, young graduating kid decides that he wants to join the army. Uh, to become a citizen, because in this world, in order to become a citizen, which gives you higher ranking and more rights, more rights. and stuff, mm-hmm. you have to serve in the army. Uh, or that's one of the ways you can become a citizen is to serve in the army and, and have a full term of service. And so he does Do that. Do you call it the army or is it? It's the mobile infantry. Yeah, the mobile infantry. Yeah, that's, no, well, there, there's several no. the armed services. Arm, there's the. Is it? I thought it was like the armed forces or something, something like that. Well, they have but, different okay. branches just like. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a global thing, right? It's. Yes, it's not just you know, it's not specifically the United States or anything like that. So, it's a, so the ba- entire ba- planet has come together into yeah, one. Yeah, ba- basically, it's the Terran Federation. Yeah, uh, the, Terran, w- is which Earth. is which is like a uh, um, a uh, totalitarian uh, or authoritarian um, yeah. government that kind of controls the entire world. And in order to get basic rights like the right to vote and stuff like that you have to have you have to be a a citizen as opposed to a civilian and only citizens are allowed to vote and stuff like that the only way you can achieve citizenship is if you um 
go, in, go into service yeah. for a, n- a number of years. And at, at this point, this uh, Terran force has gone up against this insectoid alien uh, presence in outer space that has threatened their presence in space. Uh, and there, there's a war going on. It's an ongoing war that even these, these kids have kind of grown up in this world where it's just a fact of life that we are at war with these insects. And things escalate to the point where the aliens finally, finally attack Earth itself with an asteroid destroying the city that uh, Rico had come from, killing, killing his, his parents and everything. So he, he goes on this um, almost like a, a revenge quest to get into the army, join and fight and kill the aliens to get revenge for them attacking Earth. And it's all very propagandized. Like it's he falls right into line with with what he's supposed to do according to this new government. I love the propaganda shorts. Dude, the the propaganda is hardcore in this movie. Uh-huh. Like everything that you that's seen on screen is mm-hmm directing this generation. Are you all, doing all your part? Satirical. Yes, it's very like <laughs> World War II-esque where yes. like, hey, are you collecting cans? I, I don't know. I don't know what it says about me, really, but I kind of enjoyed this whole world. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That's scary. <laughs> it's it's very, very ordered. It's very yeah. particular. Structured. It's very structured. Yep. You it's do like, your part. I have no problem with uh, having to earn citizenship to have the right to vote. Wow. That kind of, I really don't. I don't have any problem with it at all. You're a Highland disciple. Maybe. I don't, I don't know what it says about me. Well, why don't you tell us about this movie? What'd you think about it? Well, you picked it. You tell us about it. I just movie. did. I told you. I, lo- I already said why I love the movie. I'm, I'm asking you. What, do you like this movie? Or? I love this movie. Yeah? It's a great movie. What is, what is it about it that you uh, like? I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to sound like a Nazi. <laughs> but, uh, I like a lot of the visuals in this movie. I like you know the, 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 the special effects. I like the bugs. I really like the the the, the space scenes, you know. Um, this movie kind of captures me from the very beginning and keeps me engrossed in the whole thing. You know, they set it up. This is how you become a citizen. This is yeah. why you become a citizen. Then the planet gets attacked, and everybody kind of it's kind of their nine their nine eleven moment, you know. And it's like, oh well, we got to join up and go kick some bug ass, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you know, which you know, it came out before nine eleven, which is kind of interesting to me when you think about it. But, uh, um, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's an interesting movie to me. It's just, it kind of plays on that whole patriotism thing, but, but you know, there's that subtle kind of something underneath the, 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 the veil of the story there that kind of like, I don't know if I should really feel yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> way really about these about people. This. I shouldn't really, feel, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but I don't care. It's just, there's this a, is how it is. You the, know, the character and I, I can't, I can't help but try to compare that movie to kind of where society is today and and now it makes you makes you think about things a little bit different. Oh yeah, so. for sure. But the the character development in this movie is just so good. Like every yeah. every single character that you get introduced to has their own arc and it's yeah. fully realized by the end of the movie. It's fantastic. Like I think that's what makes it so engrossing is because you're immediately like I, I think what what it makes me think of is like it takes me back to high school 30 years ago. Makes sense. And it, it makes me wonder how different my life would be right now because, because I was denied my, I was going into the Navy. I was, hmm. t- I had plans from like my freshman year in high school, what I wanted to do. And I was done. And when I, when I went finally to take my uh, physical for going into the services, it, I failed for, for flat feet of all things. They hmm. just flat out denied me, said, Nope, can't do it. And I was thinking to myself, God, I wish I would have known this, you know, three years ago. <laughs> I would have planned my life a little bit differently. And, and you know, it kind of comes up to the things now. It's like, I'd be retired now. My life would be completely different if I had known that I had flat feet at the time. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, it just makes me think about things, you know. A little and, nostalgic. Yeah. Kind yeah, of yeah, like, wow, yeah. I could be, you could be, you put yourselves in, in, in his shoes, in mm-hmm. Rico's. Maybe a little bit. That's pretty cool. And, you know, it's just the whole, the whole becoming a citizen thing, earn your citizenship. It kind of, it kind of, that's kind of what they do in Israel, right? Everybody well, has to serve well, kind yeah, of thing. And it's not that they have to earn their citizenship. South Korea does. And, you have yeah, to serve for two it's, years. It's not yeah. that they have to earn their citizenship in, in Israel. It's just that it's mandatory to right. be in the armed services for like a period of like two years, I think. Yeah. Same Something thing. Like South that. Korea is the same thing. You have to serve for two or three years, I think. In the armed services, it's it's a it's a common thing. It's not unheard yeah. of to no. for, well, for I mean, uh, that, government to do that. That basically came from Robert Heinlein, like when he wrote this novel mm. um, that the movie's based on. You know, he was a he he served, I believe, he was either in the army or the navy. 
Um, and he kind of saw the rise of hippies and he, he thought that they were just a bunch of entitled pricks who didn't appreciate the freedoms that other people fought and died for. And so when he was writing this novel, he kind of envisioned this kind of militaristic society, um, where you had to basically earn the privilege of being a citizen and, you know, the, uh, I don't want to get too much into the book before Jude has her say um, on, on the movie. Yeah, but, Jude, uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell us, what do you think about this movie? Do you have any comments on it, favorite parts, or why you like it or why you dislike it? Uh, I really like this movie. And I one thing that I really like about this uh, movie is the setup of just information, how they distribute the information, which gets you invested in each of the characters. Like you were saying, like each character has its its own little story. And... Um, like one thing, and, and Kadish will attest to this, like one thing I hate in a movie is an info dump, um, info dump just for the sake of the audience getting the, the facts about the world that you're building. And in this movie, they do it perfectly. Like the one kid is just like, oh, tell me about you. And he's like, what? I'm going to be a writer. I just, I just want to know how to interview people. And so you get the story of why each person has um, decided to become um, in the mobile, um, infantry, infantry. Um, but also it gives you an idea of the world too. So the one girl is like, well, I want to go in politics and I, you know, you kind of, you have to serve in order to be in politics. And the other character is like, I want to have babies yeah. and you know, it's easier to get a license if you have babies. And it kind of <laughs> gives you an idea of this world and the rules of this world. Yeah. And like, as you go through the story, when characters start to die off, you're like, Oh God, they had plans. Yeah. So I like that. I like, I liked the, uh, the investment that this movie kind of forces upon you when you're watching it. Yeah. It's a silly little like alien bug movie, but also, really you know, it's, <laughs> there's so yeah. much more, and there's so yeah, much there's more to so it. There's so much more to it. underlying. Yeah. And I just, I wanted to say, cause I was thinking about what you said about it, you kind of like, yeah, I, I, I kind of like this idea that like everybody has a role and there's rules that you have to follow. You know, I, I, it, I understand where that's coming from, but I guess the hippie inside me is like, Screw that, man! Don't tell me. Don't let anybody tell you well, what you to know, do. Like I like, have that freedom ring in me, where I'm like, you can't for sure, tell me for sure. yes or no whether or but not. Then, I can have but then kids. I just think of you know because she just brought up the whole point about the one girl was joined up because she wanted to have babies. Yeah, it's like how many hundreds of millions of babies get supported by the U.S. tax dollars because their parents have no business. Yeah, having kids. It is, oops, oh, I guess we're going to have a kid now, but even though we can't afford it, you know, it sounds terrible. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah, no, it is, yeah. It's just There's a point people to it. have no responsibility or sense of responsibility when it comes to doing those kind of things. And I think a lot of stuff should be a privilege. Well, that you need does, to earn that kind of stuff. That all kind of came about with the, <clears throat> the destruction of the family unit. You know? Yeah. Once that got destroyed, people just started popping out kids and they didn't have a plan for what to do with them. Absolutely. And it, it kind of, it does drag on society a bit. I don't think that's a controversial topic to say. I mean, I don't think anybody has the right to tell you. you I'm can totally, I'm totally it. expecting hate for, from on my Twitter feed now. I know, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, well, you goddamn Nazi. Here, here's, How dare here's you? Here's the thing is yeah. like, you, you really can't talk about the politics of the story without talking about the book. And the changes that were made with the movie. Why don't you tell us about the book, Kadesh? Well, first of all, uh, the book was written by Robert A. Heinlein, which is uh, he he's he was one of the most prolific science fiction authors of his time. He was up there with Isaac Asimov and you know a bunch of other like famous you know sci-fi authors. And uh, he he's a big inspiration to me personally in my writing career, simply because he came up with a series of writing rules that I I follow to the letter. Um, he has like six rules for writing, technically five. That's you are a stickler for the rules, six, yeah. Um, but um, it's like Walter from the Big Lebowski. You, you know, uh, the the Starship Troopers book is so influential in so many ways that we don't even realize, especially for the military sci-fi. Like it basically launched the military sci-fi genre. Um, and in the book, the the Starship Troopers are all decked out in power armor, and this is the first instance of a science fiction story using the concept of power armor. So like they're basically like Iron Man in in the, in the book, where they just have these like super powerful suits of armor where they drop in from starships in orbit and like land and then like fight the bad guys. And that book was first published in 1959, just to give you a perspective of yeah. when he created these ideas. Yeah. And in fact, Vader, you might find this interesting since you're a Blizzard fan, but um, 
Uh, oh, he's very much influential in the StarCraft. Yeah, and, StarCraft. In, in the Warhammer 40K world, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, StarCraft basically just cribbed everything from Starship Troopers, yep. where they even used the term Terran Federation. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the all the humans are in the power armor, very similar so to he, how it's He thought he was going to drop a knowledge bomb on me. <laughs> I already knew this stuff. Uh, but but, but <laughs> the, the bugs in the Starship Trooper books, they're, they're, they were the inspiration for the swarm. And then there's another alien race in the book called the Skinnies, which was the inspiration for the Protoss. So, the Zerg, um, you mean? Uh, the, yeah, you're talking about the Zerg. But yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever the, the yeah. creepy, like, insectoid aliens are. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, the, you know, the, the book, you know, I, I read it right after, uh, I went and saw the movie and it was funny cause this movie came out my freshman year of film school and I went to see the theater, I went to see it in the theater with a group of other film students. So imagine going to a movie with four of me oh, <laughs> and, and having to, to talk about it. Oh my God. Uh, that, that was my experience. It'd be a four hour long podcast. It'd be yeah. a lot of the pushing the glasses up <laughs> well <laughs> actually yeah, it was actually mm. like we had a big we, we had a very lively debate because uh, half of us hated it and the other half loved it and i was in the, the i love this movie half um but um it was a very revolutionary novel uh for its time and uh one of the controversies surrounding it is that um like it, it it's looked at as a pro-fascist book because the the world in which in which it creates it's, it's a, a very kind of authoritarian society based around militarism and imperialism, mm-hmm. um, but I don't actually think that's an accurate take on the book because Robert Heinlein is kind of famously uh, libertarian in, in his political leanings, um, and you could read this book and think it's a kind of like far right fascist uh, propaganda piece, but it's actually kind of very middle of the road. Like in the book, the the bugs are very obviously kind of an allegory for communists and, um, and the idea that, you know, freedom isn't free. Uh, you should have to serve if you want to say in how your country is run and, and uh, the, the benefits of having a strong military in order to protect your way of life. Like all this stuff is explored in the book. And when um, the, the movie was being made, so Ed Newmeyer, who was the writer for RoboCop, he was the one who adapted this book in, into the, the movie. And he was a fan of the book since he was a kid. And Paul Verhoeven had never read the book before. And so in preparation for directing the movie, Paul Verhoeven got two chapters into the book and he pulled a Vader and he's like, I don't like this. It's boring and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so he went to Ed Newmar. He's like, Ed, just tell me what happens. And so Ed kind of fills him in and, and Paul Verhoeven's like, this sounds like a very right wing fascist movie. <laughs> Let's run with that. And, and so like basically, uh, you know, so Verhoeven was completely ignorant of the source material as he was like planning out this movie. And he kind of went in his own direction with it in terms of making it a lot more fascistic in the film than it, it was in, in the book. Um, but the the film actually kind of follows the the storyline of the book like pretty closely in terms of like it starts off with this kind of like failed um, invasion of an alien planet and then like it flashes back to Johnny Rico's days in high school and how he kind of went through the training to become this soldier and it's it's more of a character piece than like a big space opera yeah and it kind of shows like his it's a coming of age story it yeah, kind of shows his, so. his his growth from a child to like a, a man and a soldier but Verhoeven I mean. He's so subversive in this movie. It's crazy. Like the, the very opening scene where we see uh, Johnny in school with Michael Ironside as his teacher. And Michael Ironside is basically saying like, there's not a problem uh, humanity has ever faced that violence couldn't fix. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. That, that, that's kind of like the, the, um, the theme of this movie is that um, war makes fascists of us all. And that violence is a tool to be used to settle all conflict in fascist society. And it, it, it's very interesting because the way that this movie was cast and shot, so like Paul Verhoeven very um, deliberately wanted to cast people who looked like they were out of like a, a teen drama, like on, on like 90210 or something like that. He wanted people who were young and beautiful uh, because the society was uh, kind of founded in eugenics where like, you know, the undesirables were killed off before they were born and your, your regiment who's allowed to breed and who isn't and have babies. And so everyone had to look like, like really like perfect and young and, and vibrant. And he shot it in, in a very flat way. Like he wanted it to almost look like a, a bright, shiny TV movie. That's what it is. Yeah. 
and, 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 and <laughs> like, uh, in fact, Michael Ironside uh, at one point. It's the whole reason why I picked this movie is because Michael Ironside is in it. And Michael Ironside is a badass. Oh, and he's, he's also Sam Fisher. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, but, but he, he's like, he, like at one point, Michael Ironside asked Paul Verhoeven, like, why are you making such a like right wing fascist like movie? And uh, Paul Verhoeven, because like he grew up in like uh, Nazi occupied, like I, I think it was either Poland or the Netherlands or something like that. And he, he said, like, I wanted to show f um, like the ideal fascist world where you have beautiful people, you have beautiful you know, locations, you have great weapons, you have advanced technology, you have starships. And the only thing you can do with it is kill bugs. <laughs> and, and so like it, it was kind of Verhoeven's um, – because he's a very subversive filmmaker. You know, we talk about you know, subverting expectations with Ryan Johnson. And kind of he like, made that like terminology general. infamous. Yeah, but um, as opposed to subverting expectations, like uh, Verhoeven's very like subversive, like just period. Like it, his movies are so layered with subtext that kind of undercuts conventional thinking. Because you would think like – any other director would take the, this uh, material and show like the horrors of a fascist society and, and the, the main character would eventually kind of realize that it's wrong and he would rebel against it. <laughs> no. But, but the actual character arc of these characters are that they get indoctrinated in, into uh, what the society is all about and they become the type of people that the society wants them to become. Yeah. And it's this kind they of like perpetual right cycle where we, we always see like the older generation of citizens are all like horribly like deformed or like, you yeah. know, yeah. like, like, like oh, they're, they're handicapped. scene where like the guy's like, the mobile infirmary is what made me the man I am today. Yeah, he's like got no legs. Yeah. yeah, he's missing both of his legs. <laughs> but like every adult in, in, in the society at the beginning of the movie has like some type of handicap or injury that yeah. they got through their service. And all the young people who are citizens or, or civilians are like, just perfect, uh, like, you know, they look perfect. They got perfect hair. It's like they came right out, out of a soap opera yeah. type thing. And then throughout the course of the movie, you see them get roughed up <laughs> and, and become more like the, these adults. And in fact, at, at some point, they take the, the place of the adults. To, oh, yeah. Like Rico's character development, yeah. he 100 percent Percent he becomes, becomes Michael Ironside. He becomes Michael character. Ironside. Yeah. He even takes over the same squad that he was leading. Rico's roughnecks. Yeah, Rico's <laughs> roughnecks. Right. It's and it was such a yeah. And like, like at the end, you see like the new recruits in, in his squad, and they're like twelve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and, and and by the end of the movie, like all these characters are are now like in the positions that their mentors were in. Yep. And you get the sense that the younger generation is eventually going to take over for them because they're going to meet the same fate. Yeah. And it's just kind of like uh, like the ending of this movie. There's there's kinda, I don't even think it would be an ending. It's just kind of, it continues oh, it's just, on. Just, it's, yeah, there's like three or four more movies after yeah, that. Yeah, and I haven't, because they all sucked, but, right? Yeah, they're, but, they're all animated. And But the funny thing it. about um, this movie uh, at the end, because like in rewatching it, I was like, I actually felt bad for the brain bug. <laughs> yeah. And and, it, and it, the ending scene is so hilarious because like Doogie Howser um, or um, Neil Patrick Harris He's using his psychic ability to kind of read the emotions of the brain so, bug that they captured, yeah. and, and and he says it's afraid, and everyone starts cheering like, "Yes, it's afraid!" Yeah. <laughs> you know? and the poor thing's just like sitting there, like, "Oh my god!" Oh. Freaking out. I mean, I felt bad for the bugs. Really? Yeah. I did. Not I for did a not. second. Well, it, like if you really pay attention to the movie, uh, humanity started the conflict because you had these Mormon settlers who went to a bug occupied planet. Yeah. And and took up roots, and the bugs attacked them because yeah. they were taking over their territory, and it's kind of implied that that was like what started this whole conflict, and so the bugs were only responding to the aggression of this society, which basically like in, in this fascist society, because fascism at its core is about the uh, the propping up of the collective over the individual, so you yeah. give up your individual rights for the for the benefit of the state, and the state can only do that by um, enforcing like uh, authoritarianism. So it's very militaristic. Um, uh, I think the best kind of um, allegory for fascism I heard is, is that your, your nose and your ear aren't individuals. Like you wouldn't do something to benefit them over the, over your entire body type thing. And that's kind of what this was. And so in order to um, perpetuate the society, they have to constantly be at war with something or someone. And so when they were expanding out into space, they were looking for stuff to fight. This idea that like conquering land is this 
terrible, terrible thing that only a certain type of people do. I'm like, that's like just human history in general. Like you look back in history, it's always about who we're going to conquer, who we're going to take the land from. There's always going to be a winner and loser and history is written by the winners. That's just a fact. It's, of, just, it's just a human fact of nature. life. Yeah. It's human nature. It's a fact of life. And that, and this movie kind of brought that into a new, and I, I really kind of believe that we're going to keep on fighting with each other <laughs> until we find that whatever it is out on some other planet out there <laughs> that's going to bring us all together <laughs> and have a non-human yeah. well, well, something it, to it's fight. It's also funny because in this world, in, in the Starship Troopers movie, <clears> there's <throat> like extreme gender equality. Like, yeah. like, women, yeah. like, oh, women, yeah. like they all have the like co-ed bathrooms and showers and yeah. women, women do all the jobs that men do and vice versa. Yeah. Diz did, was on the football team. She was the quarterback. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was the quarterback. But also like there's that famous co-ed shower scene. Yes. Yeah. And, and one of my favorite stories about um, the making of this movie. Oh, I know where you're going with this one. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you want to do it? Um, sure. Yeah, um, go ahead. Talk about boobs. Get it. Boobs. Get it, Vader. Some boobs. Um, so, you know, Americans kind of had a hang up about co-ed nudity, right? And tell me if I'm wrong here. And uh, the actors were hesitant to film this scene. Yeah, because everyone had to be like full. Yeah, everybody yeah. full, full naked. Full. And um, they were refusing to do it until they made a deal with Paul Verhoeven, who's very European, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, okay, we'll film this scene, but only if you film it fully naked with us. <laughs> And, and he agreed and did it. So the, so the director of this scene was naked along with all the actors. Yes. Well, well, the director and the cinematographer. But it's kind of funny because like the world that they created, like, yeah. like there is no distinction between the genders in terms of like, you know, barriers to what can be done. And uh, and that's kind of like what some people are fighting for. But it, it just feels so weird when you're watching it. In, in this movie, well, these people are all extremely attractive people. Well, not only that, but it's <laughs> they're all like complete badasses. Like if you like yeah. in modern in our world that we live in now, there's very few women who make it into the Marines because the the standards are so high as far as physical power and the ability to do this thing. Like there's very few people who are able to do it. Even men, it, it's, it takes a certain type. And and like when I was watching this movie, thinking about that, I'm like watching all these girls are in the army, in the armed forces, and they're all complete bad. That one Dizzy was in the in the football team. She was the quarterback. Like these people are like top notch. There is yeah. no, there is no like that. The uh, the standards are still high, but these people are able to meet it. Yeah. No she immediately what. comes in and tries to take on the. Yeah, she um, takes down the drill, drill sergeant, sergeant. And kicks him in the face, and then he, you know. But but I mean, you, are, you also but. see the the other women where like you have the one who tripped and, and accidentally killed that guy, yeah. um, because she was incompetent with her weapon, and then you have the one who wanted to have the babies um, when they invaded. Um, was it Clindathu? Clindathu. Um, so like she panics and she starts running away and. Um, and the guys have the opposite problem where they get too into it and they like, yeah, the they, one dude they, ran they into break, it. break ranks and get like slaughtered. Um, every so, movie we pick this week is like insanely gory. You notice yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> Aliens. Aliens. They'll mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I mean, like, the, this movie just has so many like aspects to it where you could really break it down. Like, for instance, I thought it was funny that when. Uh, they show the propaganda piece where the, the bug is slaughtering the cow. They have a big censor thing. Over oh yeah. It. Yeah. And, uh, and, but you know, um, nudity is, is fine. They'll and, show the newspaper, the news guy getting ripped in half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> They'll show like the aftermath of the, the Brigham <clears throat> Young, um, settlement that got slaughtered and it's just like bodies, like body bl- parts bl- everywhere, but, yeah. but we can't show the cow because of PETA. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I don't think I'd want to see the cow anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but, but also like the funny thing, like for instance, the, the video where the sh- soldiers are, are like, you know, here's an M60, like, you know, repeating rifle who wants to hold it. And the kids are all like me, me, me. And they give, <laughs> give, give them the, the, the guns and the kids are all fighting over it and they're handing out like live ammo and, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's that indoctrination. It is. It is. And you know, if you look at it at a surface level, it's just like a funny bit. Yeah. But if you actually like sit down and think about it for a minute, like you can see how Paul Verhoeven is just like layering in like all this stuff. <laughs> and, and in fact, a, a big, um, a big um, influence for him was Lenny Reifenstahl's the triumph of the will. And Lenny Reifenstahl was like the, the head propagandist yeah. for, the, for the Nazi party. And she, she made this um, it's, it's called like the, the pinnacle of propaganda where, um, Triumph of the Will was basically it, it showcased like Hitler's Nazi Party mm-hmm. and, and it had all these like uh, incredible like visuals to it that really made the 
the Nazis seem like very powerful the and very plane formidable. flying over Berlin or yeah. whatever, and the, and the shadow turning into the and, swastika and all yeah. the people lining up and all the flags and stuff yeah. like that. And so like he basically Verhoeven studied you know this movie, and he used elements of it in in Starship Troopers, and like on its surface, it's it's a dumb like alien military like you know kind of action movie, but beneath the surface of that oh, yeah. there, there's so much going on in this film. It's a yeah. lot of warning. Every, warning every time you see, too. every time I see this movie and I can, you see the little propaganda pieces, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like I say it earlier. There's a little like, twinge that you're like, this like, isn't a good idea. And, and, and it's sad that some people look at the, the book and kind of apply what they saw in the movie to the book, because the book is actually kind of even keeled. It's not, it's not a pro fascist, a story, even though like Heinlein arguably had like some, you know, some controversial um, opinions, especially when it comes to race. Like I can remember, I read this one book of his called the the Sixth uh, Pillar, um, which uh, basically it was about the the uh, Pan Asians uh, kind of conquer the world and conquer the United States, and there's a group of like um, American uh, military guys who kind of get together and, and create a resistance. They find a research base that allows you to target a, a, a bomb explosion based off of like uh, one's race. So you can set a bomb to kill only Asians what? Oh and, and stuff like that. And so like it was very like, oh, like Heinlein's racist. But like, like it's kind of like an interesting, you know, like uh, science fiction um, concept that he was exploring. And oftentimes it gets misinterpreted as something it's not because we're trying to apply our modern sensibilities. Kind of like to, uh, in uh – Winter Soldier with the oh with the with, with, with the yeah. with the helicarriers that yeah. target only people they're going to be that problems might in be the problems. future yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's yeah. a little that's weird. pretty harsh I always like when I see these kind of things in in science fiction books and movies and stuff it always to me it always comes off as a warning like yeah. hey this is what could happen like that's the whole point of science fiction is to see what could happen in good or bad and when I watch movies like this and I'm like it's very like structured fascist type government. And I'm like, Ooh, there's a, a, there's a balance. We yeah. Have to there's find. a bit of a warning well, there. Well, it's also funny. Cause like if you watch, um, RoboCop, which was the other, um, previous collaboration that Ed Neumeyer did with Paul Verhoeven, a lot of those same elements are still there. It's, yeah. a, it's a very violent movie, but it's also very satirical. And, uh, it, it's like Verhoeven has this weird, um, kind of penchant, I guess you'd call it. Um, of making movies where at the time that they're released, uh, other than RoboCop, uh, they're not really appreciated. But then like years later, they find their audience. Like for instance, Showgirls. Showgirls has this massive cult following now. Does it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it really yeah. does. Yeah, and, uh, wow. and at the time it came out, it was considered to be like one of the worst movies ever made. It still is. <laughs> well, it kind of was. <laughs> yeah, but, but but that's that that's Verhoeven for you, is, is like on the surface, his movies aren't very good. Yeah. But the more you watch them over time, and the more you dive into them, the more layered they are, and it, it's just interesting. I don't like, know, I've never thought this movie or RoboCop were ever a bad movie. No. I've always loved both those. Movies. Yeah, uh, we're we're getting pretty long winded on this uh, topic. Let's do uh, favorite moments. Uh, Jude, you haven't talked in a while. Do you have a favorite moment uh, or character from this movie? Is there something that sticks out to you as? Um, well, you know. I know, that, I know that you all have said, like, what a badass you find Izzy and how beautiful she is and how interesting her character is. And I think all of that is true. But for me, I found her so unlikable throughout the entire movie. <laughs> I was like, God, she's such a fucking freaking ball buster. No wonder... Um, what's his name? Rico. Rico. Rico isn't in love with her because she's just such a bro through the whole thing. I was in like in my head, I'm having this argument with her, and I was just like, "Girl, tone it down." <laughs> Everything she like, did was because she was chasing after Johnny Rico, yeah. and also it was the thing that repelled him because um, yeah. the other girl, um, Carmen, she wasn't any of that. He was just like so like following her around like a puppy. It's the op. It's yeah. It's. But yeah, so I, I found her character to be um, very um, just like a bro, just like him. So why why would he want to be with her? I just found her um, in, in the book. Unlikable. The character is actually a man. Oh, really? there you go. <laughs> <laughs> just ruined that. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was your least favorite character. That was my least favorite. Do you character. have a, a favorite character? Is there somebody that you really attached to? No. No, not necessarily. Oh, you know what? I I liked. Um, Neil Patrick Harris. I liked, oh, I liked okay. his, uh, 
colonel. Yeah. So was he like really like a psychic, psychic, or was that all just a bunch stuff. of hocus pocus? No, he was a psychic. No, 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 he was psychic. Is yeah. that an, that's a yeah. thing that in this world hocus it's real? Hocus pocus. <laughs> that was a bunch of hooey. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's a, the psychic you, stuff. Because isn't if in you the book, look at like way. what he says, a lot of the times it's it's very like generic. Like well, the bug is afraid like obviously the bug's afraid <laughs> duh well he's like it could have been angry he's a he's a beta so you know. uh, yeah i guess <laughs> i just i found like his the, the whole like line of like there's real psychics out there like that was a very like nazi thing when they were looking for ways. well you know he pulled the whole thing with uh rico with that he did with his ferret yeah, That's yeah i he... felt like that was just training though you could train a ferret to go do no stuff. but but he psychically told rico that carmen was still alive and sent him down that tunnel to get her remember he said I don't know why, but I just got to go down this tunnel. Oh, was that a, that yeah, was him? That, that was, was him. that was Doogie. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay. I think they call him Doogie Mauser. Because <laughs> <laughs> like Colonel Hauser. Yeah. Like when, when, when NPH shows up at a certain point, he's in like full Nazi regalia. You know, you know the one thing I've oh, always. Oh yeah, the black trench coat with yeah, the hat. Everything. Yeah, full Nazi. Yeah, full it's Nazi. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, the one thing I've always I can't quite figure out in this movie is what the time frame is. It's like how does yeah. how does Doogie go from recruit That's years. to colonel? It I don't feel like it was that long. I feel like it was years. I, I don't know because like, they never really explained it. Once once it's like because you know you go this this movie starts and then you have the you go back a year to when they recruit yeah and then you go back to the present when with the with the battle on Clendathy. But that was their first battle though, right? Yeah, it was right out of. But I I feel like it was a pretty quick progression between. From that and yeah, the, the, end of the, movie. the timeline is not clear. It's is like it? it wasn't any longer than like maybe a year. Yeah, maybe. Right. I don't know. It depends I, on how long I, the so camp was. What's the I, timeline I, I in the know. book? Uh, I I don't remember uh, the timeline in the book. I think that it was over the course of a couple of years because I know that in the book the the training uh, section is very long and brutal. Like it, they start off with like eighteen hundred recruits in the book, and by the time they graduate, there's only like a hundred of them that actually make it into citizenship or into service or whatever. Um, that scene where he takes his lashings. Yeah. I was like, Damn. yeah. Oh, that's something I wanted to talk about was the, 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 the scale punishment. of punishment in the military is like, you can just quit and that kind of ruins your life or mm -hmm. you can stay and take your comeuppance yeah. and we might kill you if you <laughs> screw up bad enough. Yeah. I, I like how they, they just keep like, horribly injuring people and then just saying like medic like, yeah. like, like, yeah. like, like the, the, oh, the he breaks his arm the medical well, technology in this world yeah. is so advanced where they, yeah. they can just like fuck people up and i mean they, they completely rebuild his leg just sewed it all back together like a star yeah Wars he puts him in tank. a back tank and yeah puts his leg back together he's got that weird liquid thing around his arm yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i mean this movie is really cool i, I enjoy it and i i see a lot of the more controversial takes as more of a warning sign than I do of like, oh, that would be cool if it was like that. Like, no, please, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it really, we, it, we could talk about that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is meant to be a warning against that type of society. Yeah, that's how I take it anyway. It, it's it's not meant to extol its virtues. <laughs> if anything, like, if, if, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> this, is, this looks interesting. <laughs> it's like I want to live in that Where world. Where do I sign? <laughs> it's um, pretty much a lot of order going on. There's not a lot of chaos. I'm the only one who gives a shit about the there's, rules. There's, there's, there's no there's no chop zones yeah. in a yeah. future Seattle. That's in this gone world. though, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I can't yeah, remember. Like, like, never would have allowed to happen to begin with. Like in the book, they That's really true. they really kind of um, advocate for corporal punishment uh, against anyone who breaks any type of laws <laughs> or like like public floggings and stuff yeah, like that. It's a bit extreme. I happen. like it. I like it. I bet it works. The, the, There's countries out there, there like dude, that. The, the, the medieval, the medieval times were great because you know <laughs> these people stealing stuff. You put them in stocks in the middle of the town square and you throw shit at them. <laughs> That's punishment. Okay, <laughs> you don't do it again after you've been put in stocks in the middle of the city it's a square. Slippery slope, man. It's a ha slippery hash, slope. Hashtag defund stocks. Yeah, <laughs> bring them back. All Public right. executions. Well, we're, at, we're right at two hours. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> do it. <laughs> you can move to the country that does that. There are countries out there that do that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's so pretty harsh. Feel free to you know, ship on over there.